I have a much higher opinion of low-cost carriers than most people do, and there's a very specific reason for it, which we're going to explore a bit today. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process, and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased and honest opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Saigon. If you'd like to know exactly what I paid for today's flight or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. Also note that these boarding pass graphics will now include my scoring spread so that you can see how today's score fits into the other scores that I've had on the channel. As we head to check in in the international terminal, a quick tip for when you're flying via jet and the counters are super busy. Nine times out of 10, the desk noted as courtesy counter will act as a normal check-in desk during peak periods and it will always have a shorter line. One thing I wish ViaJet would do that I'm seeing is quite common on Indian low-cost carriers is to give an option to pay a few extra bucks for expedited check-in, something that I'd happily pay for. Either way though, you're gonna get stuck in the same immigration line, which was a pain in the you-know-what departing and arriving. If you've watched my videos before, you know what's gonna happen now, or at least you think you do. We're gonna go up the escalator, you're gonna take a look at Burger King, and then we're gonna go around the corner to the Le Saganese Lounge for the 18th time and so on and so forth. But not today. The Priority Pass Lounge in Saigon has just changed, and so today we get to check out the new, or well, newly refurbished Apricot Lounge. Overall, it was comfortable enough, had plenty of seats open at 10 a.m., and had the same food that you'd expect at just about any lounge in Vietnam, if not in a bit more abundance than normal. But in any lounge, my priorities are comfortable seat, working outlet, and apron views, in that order. So the Apricot Lounge is fine by me. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of my angle in this video today. If you asked me, Kevin, in the past 10 years, what thing or practice or company or event do you think has had the largest impact on Vietnamese daily life? My answers, besides COVID of course, would be bubble tea and Vietjet, and I'm being completely serious. To be clear, Viajet is not curing cancer or ridding the nation of poverty, but the rise of Viajet has quite literally opened more doors for this country and changed the way that people travel and where they travel to in monumental ways. As we check out some aircraft and head to our bus gate, I need to stress that this is all based on my own observations over the past 10 years or so in this country. It's simply my opinion. In the US, for decades now, there's been something called the Southwest Effect. Historically, when Southwest Airlines entered the new market, fares for tickets from that market would drop across the board on other carriers serving the same airport. It's applied to Spirit and JetBlue to a lesser extent over the years as well. The Southwest Effect has always been good for consumers in this sense. That same concept applies to Vietjet's case as well but it goes much, much, much deeper than just simply lowering fares. As we begin to board, one note about carry-on baggage on Vietjet. The maximum allowance is seven kilos per person. Because of the equipment that I travel with, seven kilos in a carry-on, that only exists in like my fantasy world. If you really need to carry on more than that for whatever reason, I found that if you overbook your check-in bag weight, they'll generally be a little bit flexible if they see that you're not trying to get away with it for free. When I first moved to the region, the primary way to travel between Saigon and Dalat was by bus. Dalat, by the way, is a small, charming mountain city to the north of Saigon. Sleeper bus tickets, not as luxurious as they sound, I promise, were around $8 in each direction at the time. The ride is only 300 kilometers or 180 miles, but by bus, it takes five to six hours. At the time, Vietnam Airlines was the only airline that flew between Saigon and Dalat. I believe they had two flights per day. If I remember correctly, round-trip tickets were always north of 
Suddenly around 2016, Vietjet and at the time Jetstar Pacific started flying the Saigon to Dalat route and fares started at around $30 in each direction. $30 is certainly more than an $8 bus ride, but compared to the fares that Vietnam Airlines was charging, it suddenly felt like it was almost free to fly to Dalat. Now in 2023, there are six to 10 daily flights depending on the time of year. A random date that I just checked in September has Vietjet selling tickets for $28 in each direction and Vietnam Airlines for $49. Of course, this is all one small example, but the incredible thing about the Vietjet effect is that it literally happened across the entire country in a matter of a couple years, and it made flying a realistic form of transport for the first time for a massive portion of the population. The same effect has happened in plenty of other countries as well to varying degrees. AirAsia in Malaysia, Indigo in India, Cebu Pacific in the Philippines, Lion Air in Indonesia, and the list goes on. Before we step on board, let's quickly look at today's flight stats. We'd be pulling off stand bang on time and head up to 34,000 feet for our 90 minute flight and then arrive in Phuket again bang on time. Our aircraft today is a four-year-old A321-200, which is in desperate need of a good downpour. There are a total of 39 A321-200s in the fleet, along with 20 A321neos, 19 A320s, and 5 A330s. I've flown with Viajet, I'd estimate, around 40 or 50 times, and I've never had a delay of more than two hours. Yes, I know that there are plenty of more dramatic stories out there. But I do think that delays are just part of the process with low-cost carriers. Of course, being on time is great, but if I'm paying a really cheap price for a flight, then I'll surely survive if there's a little bit of a delay. Viajet has a few A321 configurations, but unless you're really short, be sure to pay the extra reasonable fee for an extra legroom seat. 28 inches of pitch is just not something that I'm gonna put myself through when I know there's a better option for $10. One of the nice efficiencies of the stands that Viajet usually uses is that no pushback is necessary, so we just began our taxi to the departure runway. We'd be taking off to the west, the spool up, take off, and airport stats are coming up next. Our routing today made me wonder if perhaps we weren't ETOPS certified and therefore couldn't be in fully open waters? Not too sure. Anyway, let's take a look at today's in-flight amenities. Gotcha. I hope you weren't expecting pajamas. The lack of amenities is all part of the deal though. Let's take a look at Viajet's route map. Viajet has dual hubs in Hanoi and Saigon and all of these international flights. They barely existed just 10 years ago on any airline. I mean, look at this connectivity to Northeast Asia, Korea and Taiwan specifically. They fly from Seoul to eight different cities in Vietnam. They also recently launched flights to India, which just four or five years ago had literally zero connections. Now, there's nearly 15 different routes on multiple airlines, with many more thought to be on the way. Also, with their new A330s, they've just begun service to Melbourne and Sydney from Saigon. That's not even to mention all of this domestic connectivity. Before Vietjet, Vietnam was very much a hub-and-spoke market, with nearly all domestic flights passing through Saigon or Hanoi. Now, you can fly to eight different cities from Canta, seven from Dalat, ten from Haiphong, 
9 from Fuhua. 16 from Da Nang. I think you get the point. The opening quote in today's video from Tom Wolfe, quote, The Wright brothers created the single greatest cultural force since the invention of writing, unquote, really holds true in the modern age when you look at low-cost airlines in developing countries, continuously knocking down barriers. And so, that's why I'm quite fond of low-cost carriers and routinely cut them a bit of slack. They really are catalysts for massive change in this part of the world. And with 323 further aircraft on order, Viajet seems hellbent on continuing to expand that connectivity. As I digress a bit and catch my breath, I'll let you just enjoy the beautiful views as we approach Phuket, flying over the mainland and then over the Andaman Sea before making our final turns to line up for landing from the west. The beach that you can see in the distance, which stretches on and on until the northern tip of Phuket, is Maikau Beach, by the way. Maikau is where my next two videos will also be from. We landed on time and just in time. Just about an hour after, an Azure Air 767 had an engine fire and an aborted takeoff, which threw this airport into a tizzy for nearly the rest of the day, since there's only one runway and one taxiway. I think the assortment of neighboring aircraft says quite a bit about the efforts that Phuket has made to appeal to the world since reopening for tourism in November of 2021. But with all of those other planes came what might have been the longest immigration line I'd ever seen, at that point at least, in my life. 72 minutes to clear it. So overall, it's a nothing burger of a flight beyond the transport itself. But especially considering this is the only non-stop link between Saigon and Phuket, I am very happy to fly it. This is not to mention that today, like many of my other Vietjet flights, the crew on board was very friendly and efficient as always. I genuinely hope that you did enjoy this video and my bit of a tangent today. If you did, please be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the rest of my 12-part Thailand series, centered in Phuket and Koh Samui. Oh, and by the way, thanks for clicking that thumbs up button.